On July 23rd, that's Friday, tomorrow actually, the mecca of sporting events returned, the Tokyo Olympics. And Guyana has seven athletes competing at those games. Olympians, Aliyah Abrams, she's at the second Olympics. Her sister, Jasmine Abrams, she's going to be running the 100-meter. Aliyah is going to be running the 400-meter. Track and field athlete, Emmanuel Archibald, is going to be running the 100-meter. In the pool, Aliyah Kupersad, 15 years of age, is going to be our youngest Olympian. And also Andrew Fowler, he's going to be swimming the 100-meter freestyle. Alika, the 50-meter freestyle. And also boxer, Kevin Alicock, who I believe there is humongous pressure on his shoulders because many believe he can win Guyana its second Olympic medal. My name is Akim Green and with me to discuss how those athletes may perform under serious pressure is Tristan Joseph, a former journalist and more so a national track and field athlete. I think at one time a national record holder at a national track and field championships. Tristan, let's start on your specialty, the track. Uh, you have Emmanuel Archibald in 100 meter, Jasmine Abrams in the 100 meter as well, and Aliyah Abrams, a seasoned campaigner by now, her second Olympics. She's going to be in the 400 meter. Emmanuel, uh, a lot, a lot on his shoulders. He's he's been having a, a, a quite topsy turvy season heading into the Olympics, but if it's one thing with the young guy from Linden, he is confident. Could you tell me about the amount of pressure mentally he's under? Yeah, definitely. Um, of course, thanks for having me. Good, good lead to all the viewers. Um, I think Emmanuel is is on the immense pressure. Uh, going into the Olympics, his time of 10.25, which he ran in Ecuador for South American silver, is ranked a 176. And at that 176 mark, there are 16 other male sprinters there. So he he's going to have a lot resting on his shoulder. But I think um, if there's one thing he's proven is that he can perform under pressure. We've seen it at the South American games. We've seen it before at various games. And I think um, the most important thing, the key for him, would be to stick to his race pattern. Whatever that is, just stay focused, concentrate on himself, and run his best possible race of the season. Yep. In a, in a synopsis, what is going to be key for him? I, I know you may not have seen him a lot in person, but looking at the videos, you you, know, you ought more see. But is it a start? You know, what is something, if you have possible advice, you believe he could improve on the possibly and hopefully at least he could make the next round of the 100 meter heats. Yeah, definitely. And I think you really mentioned it there. His biggest problem or his biggest weakness to me is his start. Um, he's phenomenal at thinking, generating a lot of speed out of his drive phase into his acceleration phase. But that start where really he reacts a bit slower and then takes a little bit of time before he gets into his stride is going to be very key for him. So I hope that he's been doing probably like about at least eight to ten starts every day so far uh, for these Olympics. But I think, um, you know, he'll, he'll have to focus in on that. His reaction time will have to be on spot for him to, to get into the next round. And I think 10 to 5, he has a solid chance of actually going through to the next to the next round because, you know, some of the guys try to take it a little bit easy in the first round and, and sometimes they run about 9.99 there about. So if he can run a decent time, maybe a 10-1-9, 10, I think he has a good chance of making it to the second round. Well, I know for sure Emmanuel's goal is to become the fastest man in South America. So certainly if he dips below the 10, that 10 second marker is going to achieve that goal in the men's 100 meter overall. Though, let's call it a favorite, you believe that is going to walk away. Since mm -hmm. we know mm -hmm. for the first time in three Olympics, mm -hmm. the great, the legendary Usain Bolt isn't there. I think, I think Trayvon Bromel, he, he definitely, without Christian Coleman there, I think he has the best chance of being there. I think the American could possibly even sweep the 100 meter with Fred Carley and, and Ronnie Baker there as well. But of course, there's the South African guy, I think, Simbini, Akin Simbini, that recently ran 9.84 uh, as the South American national record. He could possibly, you know, break the American sweep. But uh, Trevor Bromel is my favorite, and I think he's going to do it fairly easily. Mm -hmm. On the star side of things, Jasmine Abraham, she's at her first Olympics. Quite a, a bond there that, you know, two sisters yeah. from Ghana representing Ghana the Olympics. Uh, Jasmine showed reasonable form at our national mm -hmm. track and field. Uh, me just in just you know last month they're about so you know how, how do you see maybe she progressing do you believe she's good enough to at least make it in the second round yeah i actually think she has a better chance than archibald um she's she's ranked when i checked around and she's at 69 but uh, uh for the majority of females in the spring um they're around that 11 one mark 
Uh, it's just really Sharika Jackson, Shelly Ann, and, 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 and of course, um, Elaine that is under that tent, buying consistently. Of course, there's no Sharika Richardson. She's, she's gone for a month. But um, I think she has a very good chance. I, I've watched her. I've seen just a couple of races, not much. But I think, um, you know, she has um, a very good start. And I think she can really um, propel herself into the second round. If she dips on the 11.19, which is her personal best, I think she has a good shot at even making, possibly making the final. Mm. And in terms of the overall pick for that final, uh, you know, there's big debate now about, well, <laughs> I don't think there's a debate on whether the Jamaicans will sweep it. There's just a bit of debate whether Shelly and, you know, could, you know, could win against Elaine, the, the reigning champion. Well, man, I mean, after 2008 and 2012, I can't go against the pocket bracket. Um, that girl has a has a knack for performing on the big stage, and, and I think she's even more motivated now with her son, just to show that yo, mothers can still do this at an elite level. And you know, shout out to all the mothers out there that, that are competing hard. But I think this will be a statement for Shelly Ann as she she begins to ride off into the sunset. Before we meet Ali, you must be wanting to. To make a significant mark at our second Olympics, uh, the, the 400 field to me is a bit open. You know, you're yeah. looking at some at some analysts. You know, it's a bit open even for the men as well. Even the injuries that some of the guys are heading into it. But how do you see Aliyah going? Uh, well, I think she she as well has a good shot. What, what what she has going for her, of course, is Olympic experience. So she understands the pressure. She understands what she needs to do, and I think she's more equipped to run a better race pattern than either of. Archibald or or her sister because of that experience and she's she's understood that now. But I think um you know like you said the race is open. She's around fifty one four six. Not a lot of females are really running under fifty one this year. There are a few with fifty, a few with forty nine. Of course, um, Shana Miller. We know of her great exploits and and how good she is. But I think um going to the second round to the semi final if there is that much rounds, I think she can get it done. Um, you know, Ali has been knocking on the door. Um, she's right there, with, very close to the national record, and I think she has a good shot. Into the ring now, quickly mm -hmm. into the ring. Uh, I said into the ring because I believe when uh, Kevin Alicock gets into the ring, I believe the whole of Guyana is going to be in that ring with him, throwing punches for punch, because, you know, there is a real visualization among many that this kid can really bring home an ex-medal for us. You know, do you believe the only thing stopping Kevin at this point is Kevin? Yeah, I think, listen, and I, and I don't think he's going to get in the way of himself. He's probably one of the most focused, self-driven, disciplined athletes I've come across in my time of covering any sport in this country. And I think that alone has him a notch above his competition. I think going into this, he has trained tremendously hard. If you've watched him, it's amazing. His belief, his confidence, I think all of that will play in favor of him. And, and, and here's the thing, he's had some bad decisions against him in the past. He's coming up against a guy that, that, that many thought he would have defeated if he actually got him because there's a lot of a controversy before he actually was exactly. a fight. The guy was going to fight in his first fight. So I want to certainly he has that at the back of his mind. Exactly, and I think he's going to go out hard. I know you know, listen, whatever strategy he goes into that ring with, I think he's so confident in himself that he's going to win. And I, and, I, and I don't see anything else outside of a medal for him. I think he has the ability and the capacity. And of course, he's with his coach. So now, one is a couple of things that went amiss for him, I think, too. When he went to some of these games, he didn't have his personal coach. But now he has Seward Blake in his car now in his ear and i think he's going to be even more comfortable not that terence pool is not a very good coach it's just that you know the communication between the two will be on the next level mm -hmm. uh the swimmers you know it's difficult it's difficult for us to to compete at a level that many would would, would see at the olympics given the, the lack of resources we have here but I guess as a benchmark for the swimmers, they must be looking at PBs. Correct. Uh, that that's I mean, <laughs> this is all I could ask them for. Uh, of course, no best in the pool. Um, it is definitely difficult for both the side and follow up. But you know, I really wish them well, and I hope that you know, for, they they can just make themselves. And I think whatever they do there, it should make Diana proud because it's it's hard to be swimming in Diana mm -hmm. actually because of of the lack of of. 
uh, facilities. I, 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 we could say, yes, we have a 50 meter pool, but do we have the necessary equipment and science behind it to get these athletes ready? No, we don't. So, I mean, whatever they do, I, I'm, I'm quite comfortable, but PBs are, for me is, is a big thing for them. Well, it was one thing that uh, still on the summer is a leak, though, at 15, heading to her first Olympics, yeah. and she's, she's really progressed, you know, beyond her age. If there's one thing, getting a PB at this Olympics and then in looking down the road, she can be, maybe not a better prospect at the next one, but certainly she could do great things going forward with this experience. I think this is going to do wonders for her, to boost not just her confidence, but her experience. And, um, you know, when you go back to the drawing board, after games like these, there is so much you see that you can do or you should have done or different ways that you could prepare, whether it is, it's, it's your body or your diet or how you approach your, your, your event itself. So I think this is a very good opportunity for her to learn. And then of course, in the next four years, I, I think she could possibly be right right there. You know, you never know. You know, I, I had listed earlier the athletes representing the Olympics and many persons would be wondering, I missed a name? Yes, I didn't list one name. I left her for last because she seems to be the special of the set as well. Chelsea Edgel, the first guy mm -hmm. ever to qualify a table tennis player, that is, to qualify for the Olympics. Now, table tennis, Tristan, as you would know, it's, you know, it's it, it's, it's difficult mm -hmm. <laughs> to progress every not from those those Asian countries, especially, because yeah. uh, they, they live day in, out, playing table tennis nonstop. Uh, Chelsea has got a lot of support from Ansem McCall as well, as some other companies in Guyana. But for Chelsea, being the first, uh, you know, she has stated in, in, in a section of the press, I think it was in Guyana Chronicle, that, you know, she is setting her own expectations, right. which is smart. But for Chelsea, though, you know, she, she has one thing, fight. How do you see maybe Chelsea going? Could she pip into that next round? It's difficult, yes, but I guess with her determination, anything is possible. Yeah, listen, um, she's one of the most tenacious athletes I've ever met. You know, I've been covering her since she was about nine years old. And I think this is a brilliant opportunity for her to showcase herself and for her to have that belief in herself after she competes. Um, I think she can get through to the next round. Um, I think, listen, you never know. Depending on the draws, she could even get to the round of 16. Maybe to the quarterfinals. Who knows? But of course, one, once you get there, most times they're not the Asians you meet. So, um, her expectations, of course, I would like to know what they are. <laughs> but of course, I think, um, you know, she's, she just has the opportunity to set a trend for, for Guyana from a table tennis as a female to show persons that, listen, we can do things once we believe in ourselves. I've been doing this for so long that I think, you know, what I do, and what I accomplish here and after should set a precedent for what is to come with table tennis. You've heard it from Tristan. I also spoke to Raul Tony, a senior journalist who's been very avid behind this Olympic team. Here's what he had to say. Um, it's going to be tough and testing for them when you look at the opposition that they're coming up against, all those women, uh, some of the fastest, the women running some of the fastest times, um, all of the women rather that, or most of them that Jasmine will be competing against have all touched their personal best. Shelly and Fraser Price clocked uh, six, uh, a 10.63, which happens to be the second fastest time ever in the women's 100 meters. And when you look across, uh, so Archibald, he too will be coming up against some of the fastest men in the world. So it's going to be tough, especially taking into consideration that uh, Archibald specifically didn't get a chance to compete at some of the big leagues that, you know, as, as, as his competitors, you know, even because even after the qualifiers, the regular qualifiers, those guys went off to compete in a number of diamond leagues. Was right here in Guyana training and so forth competition and him being able to up his, his ante uh, just a bit, you know, so that he could be competitive in those races. But Alia Abrams, um, she has been consistent with her time. She is the first athlete to qualify for the Olympic Games. And as such, you know, this is her second uh, appearance at the game. So I think now she knows exactly how to work the rungs and how to get through to the second round at least. So... You know, it's going to be tough and challenging for them, but I'm sure it is an experience that they will definitely take forward in their athletic career. Especially for young uh, Ali Kapusan, she's 15 years. In fact, she turned 15 this year. She turned 15 on 24th of February. 
and as such for her, she would, it's going to be about the experience because she is one to look forward to for qualification for the 2024 games in Paris. And we don't have much time for that. She's going to be just about 18 years old for the games in Paris. So when you look at, at, at her and the time she's going in with, she's still fast. But I think for her, it's, it's about the experience nonetheless. For Fowler, I think it's about improving his personal best in, in his event. So as, as you rightfully said, it is going to be about the PB, but for Posad, especially, it's going to be about having that Olympic experience at 15 years. So when she, not if, when she qualifies for Tokyo 2024, she would know exactly how to operate in an in a Olympic village, especially with this one being in a bubble. Uh, definitely. Uh, when you look at his opposition, his first matchup at the Olympic Games is Alexi de la Cruz. Now, we all know the story about Kevin Alicock facing Alexi de la Cruz. Alexi de la Cruz is the boxer uh, that Kevin was supposed to face in the Panam qualifiers in Uruguay. Um, I'm sorry, in Nicaragua, right? Uh, Alexi de la Cruz was a boxer that Kevin Alicock was disqualified against before even entering the ring because they deemed that he had on the wrong colored vest. Uh, the the referee there deemed that he had on the wrong color vest. So Kevin has much to prove against Alexi de la Cruz. And I think I, we would have shared a video with him sparring with Alexi and it didn't look too well for the, the boxer from the Dominican Republic. So I think this is a good matchup for Kevin in terms of spirit because he, he's confident that he could beat this boxer from the Dominican Republic. But that's just the first one. Um, to get at least get to medal contention, he would have to win at least what, four or five fights. So this was, uh, I think, heading into the featherweight division, which would be one of the toughest at the Olympic Games, along with the light heavyweight and the middleweight. I think this is a good start for Kevin. He's confident. I think the entire nation, as you rightfully said, is confident that he could pro progress because we are, we, are, we are aware of his potential in the ring. So I think that our one of our best medal hopes would definitely come from Kevin Alicott. I think everyone will be looking at Chelsea because of the way in which she got to the Olympics. I mean, though she didn't qualify, she was knocked out in the quarterfinals at the qualifiers in Argentina, along with the other uh, members of Team Guyana. But her qualification process was just as difficult because she had to be selected. She had to receive the one female spot that was offered to a national association that didn't have more than eight athletes at the last two Olympic Games in 2016 in Rio and 2012 in London. Her first matchup is against the player from Fiji. And, you know, in speaking to Chelsea, she's confident that she could get over the player from, from, from Fiji. She had good, you know, preparation heading into it. She had a camp in California, heading to Japan a little early, had some work out with coach Edie Lewis at the National Gymnasium there in Tokyo. So I think that I see Chelsea as you're progressing. Um, would she progress to a medal round? I think with our confidence that she, she's in right now and, you know, her spirits and anything is possible. So uh, that's one of the athletes that a lot of persons will be tuning into because she's really been in the press since she returned home from Portugal. And she has been showing that she's working very hard. And just like even her confidence too is very, very high. All in all though, Akim, we have a pretty young bunch of athletes in Tokyo. Quite frankly, the best of the lot that we have in Ghana in those respective disciplines. We can't argue with regards to, oh, this is better, this play, this better at least should have been there. We cannot really argue about it. Um, and we are proud of them and we are going to be proud of them irrespective of their result. But of course, we would want for them to give their best. And if that best is to progress to the, to the podium and at least having Guyana receive another medal other than the one that Michael Paris would have won in 1980, I think that will be good for us as a nation as well. Well, you've heard it there from both Tristan and Roll. It seems to be good enough confidence that all these guys, these athletes, seven of them, were at Tokyo Olympics. They can progress possibly from the initial stages. It will be up to them. It's a mental task. It's the mecca of sport, as I said earlier. And we have to wish these athletes well.